Hey YouTube and welcome back to the Backpack Hack Channel and today's video is about tonight. I'm going to show you how to find south using nothing more than the night sky. Now it's easy to find north and south if you have a compass and it's easy to find north and south at night if you have a compass and a flashlight. But what happens if you don't have one of these or both or you simply want to learn how to find south without using any technology? simply using your eyes and a little bit of knowledge. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. Now, this technique only works for those of you who are in the Southern Hemisphere, because we're going to be talking about identifying the South Celestial Pole. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, I've got a sister video. I'll put a link to it in the description below, and you can go watch that if you live north of the equator. If you live north of the equator, you may want to watch this video anyway and become familiar with it. That way, if you do have a chance to visit the Southern Hemisphere, you can at least take some time and go on out and identify south using nothing but the night sky. Now, mankind has used the night sky for thousands of years for navigation. Ever since a pair of eyes was put in front of an intelligent brain, we've looked up at the night sky and recognized certain patterns, certain regularities, and we can use those for navigation. The night sky that you look at today is the same night sky that Magellan and Columbus and, uh, you know, the Polynesians used to navigate across the seas, across land. This technique works both on land and sea. So let's get started, but first off I want to uh, identify one uh, technical term and that is the South Celestial Pole. If you were to imagine the Earth and the axis that it rotates on, and that line through the Earth is the axis, if you extend that up into the sky from the Southern Hemisphere, from the South Pole, directly up into the sky, that imaginary point in the sky where all the stars in the southern hemisphere appear to rotate is called the South Celestial Pole. In other words, if you went to the South Pole, which is quite possible to do, there's the scientific station at the South Pole, and you stood right on the South Pole, directly overhead would be the South Celestial Pole. And that is the point in the sky that we want to find when we look up in the night sky. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use a simulated sky and, and landscape because obviously I can't travel to the Southern Hemisphere four times a year to take these photographs. So I'm just going to use a planetarium program off of my computer to simulate this. And hopefully you'll be able to understand how to find south using nothing but the night sky. So let's get started, shall we? When you're well away from large cities and its light pollution, you will be able to see many stars and maybe even the glow of the Milky Way as shown here on the left in this simulated view of the night sky. First, what we're going to be looking for is the constellation named Crux, which is commonly referred to as the Southern Cross. Nearby, there will be two more stars you will need to identify. These are Rigel Kent and Hadar. Now, officially, their titles are Alpha and Beta Centauri, respectively, but for your purposes, we will refer to them as the pointers. Before we begin to find true south, I want to point out that because the Earth orbits the Sun, as well as rotates on its axis, where these stars are located in the sky will vary depending on what month it is, as well as what time of the night sky you were looking at it. For example, here is the Southern Cross and the pointers in March. At the same time, three months later, they will appear in a different location in the sky. In September, they have moved again, now appearing low in the evening sky. And in December, they will have moved yet again to appear here. It is also important to understand that where you are in the Southern Hemisphere, in relation to the South Pole and the equator, will make a difference on how high from the horizon they appear. Here, in a simulated view from Southern Chile, they appear quite high, while a viewer in Northern Australia even at the same local time, we'll see them much closer to the horizon. Once you can readily locate and identify these six stars, it's time to start finding the South Celestial Pole. First, mentally make a cross with the stars in the Southern Cross. Then, mentally draw a line between the two pointers. Using the longer of the two lines in the cross, Extend it thus. Now bisect the line between the two pointers. And perpendicular to the line between the pointers, draw another line to meet up with the line that you drew from the cross. 
these two extended lines will meet up near the celestial pole. Not precisely, but with practice you'll be able to locate it with enough precision for your navigation purposes. Knowing where the south celestial pole is, draw a straight line down from this imaginary point in the sky and where it meets the horizon will be true or geographic south. If you travel in a, directly towards this point on the horizon, you'll be traveling due south, parallel to all the vertical lines on your topographical maps. And if you are able to continue to travel in a straight line in that direction, you will eventually end up at the South Pole. Once you've learned how to use this method, you may want to learn how to, quote, bend the rules a bit and use curved lines instead of straight lines. So instead of a straight line from the Southern Cross, you mentally draw a long, graceful arc. Using the same technique with the pointers, you can be quite adept at accurately locating the South Celestial Pole, which will enable you to easily locate True South with ease. And so there you have it. No compass, no flashlight, just you and a little bit of knowledge. You have identified South, and with that you can estimate the other three cardinal points and get a good idea of uh, which direction you're traveling, uh, where north, south, east, and west are, and help you in your navigation. Now, it's not enough to simply watch this video. I'm going to suggest that you go out and actually do this if you live in the Southern Hemisphere. And do this not only at the first convenient time that you can do this, but do it again in three months, in six months, again in nine months. Because, these, as I mentioned, these constellations move around the sky. These stars will move depending on what time of night you look up and what time of year it is. They appear in a different place. So you need to learn how to identify where they are, identify them, no matter where they are in the sky. So this is why I always suggest that you go out and practice this. But it may have looked complicated here in this video, but once you actually go out and do it and successfully do it a couple of times on your own locally, because when you do this locally, you know which direction is south. So you know what direction to turn to in the sky. When you're out in the wild, you may not know. So if you go out and practice this and look for these stars in the sky and actually do this and practice it at least four times in the next year, you will be far better enabled to go out if you actually need to use this technique and find south because maybe your compass is broke or you've lost it or your flashlight has a dead battery or it's broke or you lost it. This can save your life by being able to simply look up at the sky and find south. If you do live in the southern hemisphere, watch my video about doing this in the northern hemisphere. Obviously, you probably can't practice it because everything's going to be below the horizon most of the time for you. But I still encourage you to watch that video and become familiar with it. And if you do happen to visit the northern hemisphere, take some time to at least step outside away from the city lights and try to find the north celestial pole. So now that you know how to find south with nothing more than your brain and your eyes, this is Backpack Hack coming at you with this trail tip. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out there on the trail.